Hi there, over the past few days I've been making the little linkages for the valve assembly on the Stuart half beam and to be honest it was all quite boring so I've not covered that with the video but I'll just show you what I've made and I decided to make some of these linkages out of brass instead of mild steel it certainly looks better Anyway, in this video I'm going to make the eccentric straps and sheave for the Stuart half beam. Now then, a couple of days ago I met up with Peter, aka Model Steamers, for a, a couple of beers. And uh, we got on the subject of machining the straps and the sheave. Now the sheave is uh, made out of a piece of mild steel bar. And the straps are made out of this piece of gun metal. Now... Um, after talking to Peter, the approach I've decided to take, he's talked me into this by the way, is uh, I'm going to clean it up first of all with a file, then I'm going to uh, drill through 7BA clear where the bolts are going to go. Once I've done that, I'm going to split it, well I'm going to scribe a line where it needs to be split and I'm going to split it along that line, probably using a hacksaw. Once I've split it, I'm going to tidy the faces up. And uh, then I'm going to uh, join it with um, silver solder and I'm going to put the uh, bolts through as well to use it as a guide. Uh, once I've done that, I'll put it in the four jaw chuck and then I'll mill out the centre. Now this centre needs a groove putting in in the middle which is round about 1 32nd of an inch wide and 1 32nd of an inch deep. And um, I've been looking all over the place for a tool that might do that. And Peter suggested that I make my own, because I think he did something similar. Um, and this is what I've made, based on his suggestions. Now this is uh, just a piece of bar with a hole drilled through. I think this, uh, this is a drill bit, no, the other end of a drill bit, which I've just cut off and uh, it's an eighth of an inch in diameter I think and I've just used the bench grinder just to put a little cutter on, on the end which is just over one thirty second of an inch uh, in width so the idea will be to sort of cut like that so that's the plan anyway so we'll uh, see how we get on okay so I've tidied it up with a file and uh, I've just used this edge finder just to find that edge there. I've zeroized the DRO, so what I'll do now is find this edge here. And that's just gone. And that reads uh, 1.892. So, the actual distance between the holes needs to be 1 and 7 sixteenths of an inch, which is 1.438. So if I take 1.438 off 1.892, that gives me 0.454. Divide that by 2, and that gives me 0.227. So I know that from this edge here, I need to move the x-axis 0.227 of an inch to get to that centre point. So I go back on zero and now I need to move it 0.227 Lock the x-axis Put the centre drill in. So I zeroize the DRO and then move the x axis 
this way one and seven sixteenths of an inch. Point four three eight and point four. Okay, that looks good. So I'll drill right through with. Um, 7BA clear drill bit. Okay so this is a 2.6mm drill bit. I've just drilled that hole right through and I'll repeat it on this side. So to cut the strap in half I've just clamped it to this piece of wood which is held in the woodworking vise. Now I've just got my uh, little mini hacksaw. seem to go okay. Now when I scribed the centre line to indicate where to cut with a hacksaw I also scribed uh, a couple of other lines one two millimetres away from the centre line here and the other one on the opposite side two millimetres away from the centre line. And I'm going to use those lines to level each piece up in the vise on the mill. Once I've done that I can then just take off a few thou just to uh, clean these spaces up. Now I don't know whether you can see that but the scribe lines there uh, I've eyeballed them to be parallel with the top of the vise and as a double check I've just touched this tool on each of them and it's within a thou so I'm quite happy that it's all set up correctly. So I'm going to take about five thou off each of these. Once I've done that um, I'll do the other strap, but I won't show that on video. Well now I'm winging it. Uh, I don't know how to silver solder but I've put some uh, flux on here and uh, I've got some silver solder so we'll give it a bash. Well, it's not exactly flat, but uh, we'll have another go at the other one. The idea being just to uh, cover it. Well, it seems to have stuck. So if I do the same on the other side, on the other half, uh, then I might be able to heat them both up and join them together. That's the plan anyway. Well I managed to get some silver solder on each of the faces to, uh, to a fashion but um, it wasn't great so I filed some of it off, um, got rid of quite a bit of it to be honest. Um, but what's remaining as I did to the faces, now I've just put um, a couple of little brass rods through the holes where the 7BA bolts are going to go 
and uh, I think the, the plan is here to heat it up and then gradually tighten the vise so it all comes together. Well that was a bit of a disaster to be honest, um, it's not spot on level and there's a gap there so uh, I'm going to apply some heat and take it apart and have a rethink. So this is plan B and what I decided to do is use super glue. So I've just super glued the halves together and then I add um, a bit of spare uh, 7BA rod and some nuts. And I've just put those through there to provide some extra sort of support so fingers crossed that'll be okay. Okay, so I've uh, put the straps in this four jaw chuck and I've reversed this jaw here to cater for this long bit. And um, to sort of centre it up, I've centred on the joins on these jaws here and I've put a boring bar on just to make a mark to see sort of how sort of central it will look. And I think that looks okay. I also put a dial gauge on the front, um, it's probably about 5 to 10 thou out to be honest but I think it'll be okay. So I've calculated what I need to do is to take um, around about 60 thou off the front. Okay, now what I need to do is to open up the centre to uh, one and a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. Okay, so uh, I've put the special tool that I made in the tool holder and I put the cutter uh, flush to this face here and then I moved it in, uh, let me see, an eighth of an inch using the cross slide. So that puts it in the centre of what is going to be a quarter of an inch width um, strap. So what I need to do now is I need to cut a groove which is 1 32nd of an inch deep which uh, equates to 0.795 millimeters um, which is 39.7 increments on my uh, cross slide so we'll uh, give it a bash
looks interesting. So to machine the other side of the straps I've decided to uh, clamp it down on the uh, milling table uh, on top of this one, two, three block. Um, there's about 70 thou to come off so I'll do it in 10 thou increments. Once I've got it down to the uh, appropriate width which is or depth which is a quarter of an inch I'll uh, then move the clamps to the other sides and then finish the uh, rest off. Well I'm really chuffed with the way that's turned out, so what I need to do now is to uh, machine the sheave. Ok so I've centred it on the uh, four jaw chuck and uh, I've faced this end off already. Um, this is one and a quarter inches in diameter and it needs to be turned down to one and an eighth. Um, so that means I've got to take uh, eighth of an inch off. Um, divide that by 2 is 0 0.0625 which is equivalent to 1.5875 millimetres. OK, so what I need to do now is to turn this down uh, to a diameter of round about one and a sixteenth of an inch for this strap to have a nice fit. And I need to turn it down to that diameter for a distance of, let me see, 23 sixty-fourths of an inch.
that's pretty good. Okay, so uh, what I need to do now is to uh, make this raised bit that runs inside the uh, strap. Now the raised bit needs to be around about a 132nd of an inch. So I've set the um, carriage stop to that point and the, the only way I can think of doing it is by using a parting tool. Um, so and I know the depth I need to go to uh, with this parting tool because I just set it up, up to zero on here. Um, so I'll, I'll give it a try. very fine. So uh, I need to do it again just to widen it up and uh, I'll get back to you. Well I ended up taking a few more thou off because it was a bit tight. That looks pretty good. Happy with that. So I had to take the sheave out to mark it up uh, and I've marked up an offset of 9.64 of an inch from the centre and I've placed it back in the four jaw chuck and uh, I just put the strap on just to um, butt that up against the jaws of the chuck just to make sure that it's all nice and concentric so I'm going to take that off now and then I'm going to machine this boss here and it needs to be turned to uh, 11 sixteenths of an inch in diameter for about a quarter of an inch in, uh, in width Well that looks okay, so all I need to do now is to drill and ream that to 7 sixteenths of an inch then I need to part it off uh, but I'll do all that off camera and then I'll get back to you Oops! Well that was interesting and a good demonstration on how not to silver solder. I think I need to work on my technique somewhat. Uh, but anyway, we sort of got there in the end and uh, thanks for, to Peter for his uh, help and advice and guidance and uh, the little tool I made worked out really really well for uh, cutting the groove so I'm really happy with that. And uh, I'm, th This little engine is now so close I just need to make the linkage between this and uh, this mechanism here. But I'm gonna do that off camera because it's fairly straightforward. Um, and my next video will hopefully be um, showing a test run of uh, 
this little engine just on air um, I probably won't uh, put any gaskets on it or anything like that but I just want to see uh, sort of how it runs before I uh, paint it uh, but anyway um, I hope you like the results so far and I hope to see you later <laughs>